Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. If this is your first time watching, I'm Chris, and today I'm underneath my RV. What happens when things break on the road? Let's take a look. Yo. Uh -oh. As we were driving down the highway, I noticed that the trailer seemed to be leaning a bit to the right. So uh, we decided to pull over to the rest area and do some quick inspection and came to find out that one of the shackles from the leaf spring uh, just broke probably on some big bump. Um, so we limped our way down to this campground and uh, we're gonna hopefully get this thing replaced. The connection you see there between this, this is called a little shackle. It's literally just a thin piece of metal that attaches a leaf spring into the center. And on this side, as you see, it broke right out. So uh, fortunately the leaf spring just sat up against the frame and uh, it wasn't, wasn't off angle at all. So the tire didn't get any extra wear and we were able to get down to this campground. But now I gotta try and find these somewhere at a tractor supply or a local RV store and replace these. All right, so what I've done is I just went ahead and took out the old shackles. Uh, pretty easy thing to do, just unbolted them. Went down to the local RV store and they had replacement shackles and bolts, 23 bucks. And uh, now I got this side jacked up so it, it relieved the pressure and now this is back to even and I'll be able to put the shackle in here. All right, so now I got the shackle replaced, tighten these bolts down pretty good. I noticed that these other ones are kind of loose and I think that the, uh, the same thing's probably gonna end up happening to them. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna order a replacement kit. They have a upgraded hardware kit for these things uh, and just replace all of them all the way around just because it's a pretty, you know, integral part to the suspension system. So we're gonna go ahead and replace all that uh, once we get down to our next stop and uh, we're there for several weeks. So, but this'll, this'll do for now and get us where we're going. So when our other side had broke, uh, when we were going down the highway, um, I did notice that some of these other ones, and I'm not sure if you can see from that shot, but I'll show you. These other ones were really in rough shape. Um, this one looks fine, but this one is bent all the way out and it looks like it's broken on top. So we are gonna replace all the shackles. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this side done right now. So I bought this kit on Amazon. Uh, it came with two sized shackles. Obviously I only need the one that is the direct replacement, but um, it was just the best bang for your buck, even though it came with extra parts that I don't need um, to find the kit that was just the right size was more expensive. So uh, this is what I got on Amazon. It is by Lippert. So I'm gonna go and put a link in the description below so you can see where you can get that. So you can see just by putting it up here, you know, this is the right size piece and they'd sent me these ones, which are significantly larger, and you can see would make the suspension be uh, all out of whack. So make sure you have the right size shackle for the right size equipment. And it came with new uh, little plastic bushings for the inside. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to do the wet bolt kit just because I don't want to worry about greasing them and stuff, and I think these are fine as is, but we'll see how they do going down the road and uh, we'll give you a report back and maybe in like a year or so and see how they're doing. Okay, so what we gotta do now on these shackles to replace them, which you can see this is the one that I repaired when we were at a campground uh, on our way down to this, uh, our spot right now. I am gonna replace this one as well just because I want all of them to be the same exact ones that I ordered off Amazon. I'm still gonna keep this one as a spare just in case, but I am gonna swap it out so that they all match. But first you gotta break loose the nut that's on the back here, which on my axles is a 11 16 I believe. Yep. And the front is a 13 16 um, The front is wedged in there. I'll show you what that looks like. Look at that. You can see how this one here is a perfect circle and this one is nice and oblong. Eventually this would have broke out just like the other one did and just like the one on the other side did That's why I'm replacing these so something to look for is this Oval type shape instead of a circle on any of your shackles and you know that you should probably replace them
So you can see it on the new bolt, right up here at the neck are a bunch of little tiny teeth. And those teeth, they grip when you put it in. So that's why, you know, these old ones that I just took out on this side, they came out pretty easily. But the new one that I just put in and took back out, if you noticed, it came out as one big piece because these teeth grab into that. You see it just sits there, but when it gets wrenched down, it gets pressed into it and it does not move. It does not go anywhere. So that's why that one is sitting there with two bolts in it. But that's why I say to loosen the nut and not the bolt because on the other side, I struggled for about an hour trying to loosen the freaking bolt when I should have been loosening the nut and I just wasted, you know, half the, half the day away. So now that we got that, let's get these new ones in here. Well, this side went a lot smoother than the other side. The other side, like I said, I struggled with one bolt. It was just stuck. And then once I got it out or once I got the nut loose, it was stuck inside here. So I ended up taking down the entire equalizer, cleaning it all up and using a, a table vise to get the darn thing out. But we got it all done. We got all these replaced. These are all good. I'm gonna go ahead and grease my equalizers because I don't know last time they were greased. So I'm gonna clean out the Zerks and grease both of them. So I'll even show you what that looks like. So you can see the little Zerk fitting in there. I'm gonna first try and get it cleaned off. We got a few maintenance things to do today. One of them is this screen right here, as you can see. I had a little dog decide it was fun to chew through it. So I got this new grate here, this metal grate. It just mounts up in the corners, really simple. Got it at Ace. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and repair this screen right here. So the first thing we need to do is take out the old screen. And at this point, this is garbage. So we're just gonna start right here at the edge and uh, I'm gonna have to go grab a screwdriver. We're just gonna pull, pull the lining out, the screen will come out, put the new screen in. I went to Ace and picked up this rescreening kit. I went ahead and took out the old screen. I got it laying down right over here. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut our new screen, basically uh, the same size plus half inch all the way around so that I can trim it later. So you can see I got my new screen, half inch, half inch and I'm just going to go ahead and cut across the top and this side an extra half inch around it doesn't have to be exact you'll see once I get the screen in there that you're going to be trimming it back anyways you just don't want to be dealing with a bunch of excess it's going to make that cut real quick and uh, the rest I'm going to save for the future because you never know what can happen so let's get this cut real quick all right now I got the screen cut I'm going to fold that up and save it for later let's go get this in the door I decided to just go ahead and reuse the same pieces that I pulled out of the door. That way I don't need to recut anything. But uh, I just got this held up here just so that it holds the screen in place. And we're just gonna take this roller and you kind of press in and roll it across and it presses it down into the groove. All right, now I got the channel, channel bead in here. And again, I just took this thing and just ran it through nice and tight on all the sides. But you see, we got all this excess. Again, that's why you cut that extra half inch because over here, I barely have any. Up here, I got a good amount. Down here, I got a good amount. So now I'm gonna take a, uh, a rotary cutter that my girlfriend has, um, thankfully. But you can also use an X-Acto blade or a knife or a razor or scissors or anything like that just to kind of run right down the side here and cut the excess screen off um, without cutting into your actual bead that you got here. And there you have it. Nice clean seams all the way around. Just cut off the excess. And nice new protector on the inside, which again was super easy, four screws. And uh, 
let's see the dog try and get through that. Next thing on the project list is this microwave. It got taken out by a storm, which if you watched my episode from a couple weeks ago, you saw that we did a lot of electrical work to prevent this kind of thing from happening again. But uh, it got taken apart or taken out by the storm, so we're gonna go and replace this thing. First thing we need to do is unmount it. In our cabinet above the microwave is a few Phillips head screws. We gotta go ahead and take those out so we can drop this down. So I got the old microwave out here. Uh, once I took out those bolts from up top, there's the two on one side and a third over there. Once I did that, it just kind of leaned forward and then came right out of the bracket out of the bottom and came right out. So it's really easy. Now, this is a rear vent system. So on the new microwave, which is not brand new, I found it on Facebook Marketplace. It was marked for $100. I talked the guy down to $75. I got there and it wouldn't turn on unless it was tilted at a perfect angle. Um, so I don't know what that all was all about, but I offered him 20 bucks and I feel like it has something to do with being mounted up. I don't really know enough about microwaves to tell you yet, but we'll see once we get it plugged in. But it had two little things back here that blocked this. So I popped, popped those out on both sides, took our screws off the top and then turned this thing around because this was set to recirculate, which it would have just gone through and out the front, but I want it to come out the vent out the back. So I just popped that off flipped right around, put it back on. Super easy thing to do. Next, I'm gonna just double check that our mounts are the exact same as the old microwave, which they look to be. If so, I'm just gonna pop this right in and see if it works. As you can see, I got the microwave in and it works. Uh, all It's just a reverse process. Once I brought it in, I kind of brought it in an angle, set it down on the brackets, which you can see right there, there, across all the way. Set it down on that pushed in on the front and then through the top I dropped the bolts in and got those on plugged it in and it worked I tested it everything works so $20 brand new microwave third thing on our list is a new uh, I'm actually not replacing the whole step I'm just replacing the end cap here because I used to have on the ladder rack as you can see right here it is broken uh, and it's just the end cap that broke that's all that that's all that broke was the end cap so I couldn't find an end cap by itself. I just couldn't find them. So I bought an entirely new tread, which again, don't need it. I just need the end cap. Um, so if I replace this, it's gonna look super bright and shiny compared to the other ones. And it'll just look weird. So I'm just gonna replace this end cap. We're just gonna unscrew right here, put the new one on and re-screw it in. And that's it. Just three screws, popped it right in there. And now we're good to go. That's it for this week's video. I appreciate you watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and share the channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.